You're starting to, I think you might be starting to hop on the Tom Hardy train a little bit. Starting to see mm. the truth. Welcome back to Life Lessons in Film. And we're going to be analyzing life from film. Through in film. <laughs> we're going to be making sense of Making life. sense of life through Warrior today. Yeah, okay, we'll start again. Tom Hardy, we'll start Joel. Again. <laughs> it was a mess. All right, today we're going to be making sense of life through Warrior. Tom Hardy, Joel Edgerton, or Joel Edgerton, either way, both great. Oh, and Nick Nolte, can't forget. Yeah, uh, oh my gosh. Third time I watched the movie. Nick Nolte, so. Some ways, maybe it's my favorite time I watched it. Yeah. It's heavy. It is rough. It is tough. It is brutal. It is impactful. It is powerful. <laughs> <laughs> potent. It. it is potent. It is pungent. Triple distilled. <laughs> now, 20 seconds to synopsisize the whole film. The story follows two estranged brothers. Uh, they were split from a young age. One decided to stay with the mother, while the other decided to stay with the father, who was an abusive alcoholic. They end up reuniting uh, because they're both in part of this uh, winner-take-all uh, MMA tournament, and they have to fight each other at the final round, and it's them following that. Uh, and then the family's dysfunction and, and them trying to get along with their father afterwards. Ah, it was okay. Uh, the one brother went AWOL after his unit got friendly fired upon by Allied troops. And, uh, and then he returned back to the States and wanted to train to kind of figure out getting his life back together. So he uh, begrudgingly uh, contacted his, his dad, which they have no relationship with, bad relationship with. And then his other brother, his older brother, He's a physics teacher with a wife and kids, uh, with a home being foreclosed on. So there's a lot of pressure on both to uh, make money. Make money. Yeah, the one who was at war um, asked the dad to coach him because yeah. that's he he'd been uh, in the sport mm -hmm. uh, when he was a teenager yeah. already, and the dad was the one coaching him. Yeah. And he wanted the money to uh, he wanted to win money to give to um, a friend of his. Yeah. That they were um, soldiers. Yeah. They were both soldiers, and yeah. then. And then um, the other brother wanted it because, you know, to pay. Stop the bank from taking his home. Yeah. 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 Not, the, the family was torn it's apart. It's non-existent, there, there, yeah. there was no relationship. Yeah, and then the one who went to war had to basically caretake for the mom. Yeah, who had been passed had, away. Who had been passed away. And, yeah, he was on and his he, own. Yeah, and he has this resentment and bitterness towards the brother because he's like, you left me. Yeah. The brother left or stayed with the, the dad. Yeah. And then because also there was a girl that he was in love with. Yeah. And so he felt neglected. Yeah. Uh, and he also, he felt, I think, betrayed too, because he said, uh, he's like, we both knew that we were trying to get away from our dad because he was abusive and he was destroying, he was destructive to himself and us. So why did you stay with him? Like, you should yeah. have come with us. You could have helped me take care of mom. Yeah. And he's like, well, I, I fell in love. What did you want me to do? You know? The older brother. Oh, God, I'm getting so angry. <laughs> Obviously, both of them were growing up in this abusive home. And the parents just, so they weren't the people that they were, that are supposed to nurture and love them and take care, of take care of them and that they were supposed to depend on didn't do that. And so you have a, your sibling. And so sometimes, and that can, that's a, a lot of times a saving grace to just mm -hmm. at least have yeah. your sibling. You, you both are going through this really yeah. tough thing and at least, you know, you have your older brother. Mm -hmm. If dad is, when dad is beating up mom. Yeah. You can go and, you know, um, Someone else knows what you're going through Someone and else, you can yeah. help each other through it. Yeah. And when the older brother decided to stay with, with the dad in the end, it was just the most... It was like the one support system that I yeah. do have is choosing this yeah. person yeah. that wrecked yeah. our lives. Yeah. And um, on top of that, even though I, I do understand the fact of him finding love, that is mm -hmm. very important. Um but I do also understand the pain of yeah. um, the that extra being betrayal. Like, and, and on top of wound after wound, when they finally reunite, his older brother is, I mean, you know, struggling in terms financially, but he's got wife and kids, he's got in his wallet. And he's like, oh, well, maybe. So you, you stuck it out with the abuser, and now look at your life, you know, well, look at me, where I, I had decided to leave the abuser and protect our mother. And I was screwed after that because of that choice. If I were in that position, if I did find love, do I cultivate the love that I have with this person that right. I found? And also um, take care of my family or be supportive right. as the supportive older brother? 
it's it's so hard for me because I know at the end of the day everybody has their own life life to live. I just feel like they both were so young, right, yeah. when they were separated. Um, and at that time, it's it's hard for me to say that it was okay for the older brother to leave right. because he was still the younger brother was still yeah. needing. Um, an adult figure, a parent figure, yeah. and he was that to yeah. me. And so that makes it hard as much as I understand. I guess it really just shouldn't have ever, ha shouldn't have ever had to come to that. No one should have to make that choice, especially, at, yeah, I think they were both teenagers, right? Yeah. But then you also get where the older brother was feeling like, well, I didn't want to abandon you two. I guess I kind of wanted both. I wanted to be with the person that I fell in love with, but also stay in contact with you guys. But you didn't, you cut co ties with me. And then you didn't let me know when our mother passed away? Yeah, I mean, what you're saying is completely right. The brothers, ugh, both of them were parentified. There were, were no adult figures in the mm. family. For both of the two brothers, it was unfair for them to have to assume these roles mm. of taking care of their own parents. And I know, I remember when the dad, he, he falls off the wagon mm. after a thousand, over a thousand days sober because of an uh, kind of like a, 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 a an altercation that he yeah. has with the younger with the, with the younger uh, son yeah. and then he you know he goes on a binge and then um, the, and then Tommy the younger son finds him at a hotel and then yeah. the way that he responded it was so evident that yeah. this was something that he used to do growing yeah. up yeah. he knew exactly what he had to do dad is drunk yeah um he almost and, went like switched into being like i don't want to talk to you yeah i don't want any communication with you apart from training to seeing him drunk being like all right let's get you into a position where you don't choke on your own vomit or something yeah, yeah. and he did went that, into like, helper mode like parent, yeah parent mode yeah yeah and even like nurturing him and holding yeah. him to, to comfort him yeah like like, like physical Complete, touch stroking him yeah. it's like hey breathe easy you yeah. know we'll get through this yeah so you know that these are things that they had to, they grew up with yeah. right and and so and so it's unfair on both of them even for me to say well you know the older brother i feel kind of like it's hard for me to say well you know it's fine for the older brother to leave especially because the younger brother needed support at the end of the day they were both young and so i think that's one of the things that's really really tough isn't it and when you do grow up in that kind of home you know, anyone that is, that does offer that, that love you want to hold on to. And, but, oh man, it was such a heartbreaking movie. Mm -hmm. Um, it obviously is so much, it, it's not about the fight at no. all. No. <laughs> the thing about the movie, the dad is trying to, uh, make amends. Yeah. And I remember one time, one of the times that he tries, Tommy is like, you know, you're, I preferred you when you were drunk. Mm -hmm. He's like, I needed you before. Now mm -hmm. I, now you can't do anything yeah. for me. And I really f felt that it was such a, gosh, it just, that really broke my heart because you have, um, there's so many things that are just social, cognitive, emotional. You are not able to, to develop yourself, mm -hmm. like to become fully functional. Yeah. You're not be able to do that. There is no, um, there. You're not afforded yeah. any tools whatsoever in that in an abusive home yeah. to to develop um, in a way that's going to make you functional, in the yeah. way that's going to make you yeah. allow you to develop healthy relationships yeah. with people and allow you to navigate yeah. to navigate life, you know, happily. Yeah. A lot of the times when you do come from those uh, abusive homes, whatever happened in the abusive home, you actually perpetuate it, right? There's that whole intergenerational trauma. It, there is that because whatever, however you grew up, yeah. you that's how you relate with people because yeah. that's the only thing you know. Yeah. And even things like um, you pursue unhealthy relationships mm -hmm. where you are treated, you allow yourself to be treated badly because... In your home, you yeah. you were expected to just take it yeah. and not complain or not to expect to be treated kindly. So you then, um, when you're interacting with people, with the world, you don't respect yourself or you take negative treatment as, mm -hmm. as something that is you're deserving of. Yeah. With the older brother, he was able to kind of to break away from that and find um, his own carve out a piece yeah. of his of the world that was yeah. much better. Which, which is maybe why he was you know he probably weighed the options of stick stay with the abusive dad but here's a chance of actually breaking out of our family situation yeah you know maybe he recognized that 
his partner was someone that could actually help him be healthier and, and avoid the same cycle. You know? Yeah. When you come up from that family, when you're an adult, there is no going back. Mm-hmm. There is no going to mom and dad and saying, well, you know, you didn't treat, you didn't raise me right. Even though now the father is wa- yeah. wanting amends, you can say sorry, but yeah. the damage is, is truly done. Yeah. And you now, the, the responsibility to find a life yeah. that is, ha- you know, a, to find happiness, the yeah. responsibility to find happiness yeah. rests on you now. Yeah. And it's even harder. The worst part is that now it's even harder because you have to undo yeah. all the hurt, right? And then on top of undoing all the hurt, you have to t- become your own parent and teach yourself how to function in mm-hmm. society in a way that your parents should have done. Yeah. So you're dealing with that. You're dealing with the pain of parental neglect. Yeah. You're dealing with the pain of physical abuse. You're yeah. dealing with the pain of how all of that affected yeah. or is making your yeah. life difficult in the present moment you know people talk about forgiveness right but like when you do come from that kind of family and we all do want to forgive but it does become so much harder because when you come from that an abusive home all those things that you didn't get growing up it's it's very clear Mm -hmm. as an adult you there's so many things that you struggle with things that are so easy that come so easily to other people they don't come easily to you yeah. and everything is goes slower because you're always making mistakes, always yeah. trying to figure out. You always have to having to learn all of these new things yeah. or, you know, and then there are just so many more obstacles yeah. for you because of that. And so that constant reminder, yeah. it, it does make it such a hard thing when your abusive parent then wants amends yeah. Yeah. because it's like every single day, the yeah. moment I wake up, I am reminded of what yeah. you didn't give me. Yeah. And so it's really, really tough because I'm just trying to deal with that. I'm trying to become a parent to myself. But at the same time, now that you're an adult, you're not a kid anymore. You have the cognitive presence now to know that your own dad did come, probably had their own pain. Mm -hmm. And whatever they gave you, no matter how awful it was, was literally the best that they could give you because they also didn't get anything. Yeah. Um, And so... So now you are dealing with the anger and resentment yeah. and the guilt yeah. and, and and sorrow of yeah. empathizing with your own father yeah. who went through. Who you still feel, re- you, you, you feel sad and regretful for what they went through, but still resentful at the same time, which is a tough, complex yeah. bag of emotions to try and deal with. And especially if you can never really resolve it, uh, even if the, the dad tries to be buddy, buddy to to them after and making jokes or singing songs. And then the whole time he's just like, again, we're training. Like, I don't know why you think you can just come back into my life and we can be friends again, but this is, this is not, you know, you can't just heal decades of abandonment, isolation, shame, everything, pain with just, Oh great. Now we're going to like nothing, nothing really changed. Someone might say, well, if you aren't well off and you can't afford to take care of even yourself, why have kids? But I find that that logic is indicative of the privilege of the person. And and by the way, I, I used to have that same logic too, where I'm like, well, if you grew up in poverty, why are you having kids? If you're not given support or a way to have build self-confidence or any leisure time or recreation to actually develop a way to plan things out or to even have people that support you enough to say, so what's your plan for things? Or, or even the notion the, of, or the notion planning. of planning or the, thinking what, ahead. What do we plan? How exactly. do you organize? Yeah, yeah. What is that? Think ahead. Yeah. What is the value of money? Yeah. The, the day to day survival. Stuff. You can't, you can't be doing stuff. that. Yeah. yeah. That is a luxury. It, it is really a, a very ignorant yeah. statement. I'm realizing I did also feel really bad for the dad. I can see with this man that he's gone through that whole you know, recovery program and he's trying to heal. And I think he's reflected a lot on his life, which is one of those, you know, the, the, the programs um, help you with. And he's gone for over a thousand days sober. He's listening to audiobooks and he's, um, you know, turned to God. Mm-hmm. All these things yeah. that have helped him yeah. gain st- um, stability stability, and reflect on his, on his life. And mm-hmm. so I think that's there is definitely an understanding of what he did and he is trying to seek forgiveness from the kids and to try as much as possible to, yeah. you know, help them on in life as, as much as he can. Yeah. And so the, I, um, and, and the whole thing about no one actually ever being taught in school how to have 
a healthy family, healthy relationships with your spouse, with your kids, with yourself. No one's ever taught that. You're just expected to know or figure it out on your own. Yeah. Right. If you do, if you don't know how to be a friend to yourself, friend to your partner, friend to your family, friend, to, then uh, the stuff will keep repeating. Right. Again, until we 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 repeat history because we're ignorant of it. In this family, everybody, all of the the bro- the brothers and the dad, they all want love. They all want understanding, and they all want nurturing, mm-hmm. and they all want it from each other. Mm-hmm. But neither of them knows how to give it. Yeah. And that is such a heartbreaking thing. Yeah. I've said my piece. I've said my piece. No more pieces to be said. You're starting to... I think you might be starting to hop on the Tom Hardy train a little bit. Starting to see Mm. the truth. Coming from that family, right? You struggle to interact with people. You don't know how to interact with people in a healthy way. So even then, you're alone all the time. We'd be interested to know what yeah. kind of themes you, yeah. you you found in the movie that resonated with you. Yeah. And yeah, if what we said made any kind of sense, but yeah. yeah. We hope. It was a heartbreaking. It yeah. was a heartbreaking. Oh yeah. Movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Boop. That's about it. Yeah. Easy ten out of ten. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, I thought we weren't doing that anymore. Oh, maybe not. It's still tender. Yeah. We just watched it. Yeah, we're gonna be tender for a bit. <laughs> Uh, off camera yeah but uh (laughs) take care be well (laughs) bye bye